What is happening, everybody? And welcome. This is episode number 72 of RizzoCast. I'm Stephen Rizzotto, joined alongside Jasper Lindsay and Jasper. We had a wild one on Friday's trade deadline. It was one for the ages. And I know we say that whenever, you know, multiple big deals happen, but this was an impressive one. And, you know, there's, there's, we're going to get into each and every trade. We're going to break down the trades uh, or at least m- most of the big ones. And it should be a lot of fun as we get into it. But, uh, you know, it's the day after. How you feeling? What's going on with you? Uh, well, the Rockies, of course, <laughs> didn't do anything. They stood pat at the deadline, uh, just being the poverty franchise that they are. Um, but no, this was honestly so much fun to just kind of go through the Twitter feed and just keep checking, checking, checking. Jeff Pass notifications on, John Heyman notifications on. Um, and it's one of the better ones. I think, honestly, getting rid of the waiver deadline has made the trade deadline more significant in baseball. Mm-hmm. And I think we're going to see a lot more trade blockbusters like this going forward, and it's fun to watch. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I think, uh, you know, we the best part about the trade deadline is every team, we get to see where they're at mentally in terms of right. you know, not just this year, but also the future. Um, like, for example, it was like two weeks ago, a week ago, that, you know, we weren't counting the Nationals out. Or I think I did, and you, you stopped me, or or uh, you did, and I stopped you. I don't know. But, um, you know, the, and then the Nationals had a horrid, you know, kind of week before the All-Star game, and they've been bad ever since. So they went and tore it all down. Uh, we obviously know where teams like the Giants, the Dodgers, um, you know, teams like that, we know where they're at. Um, and then there's the teams like the Rockies that we'll get into. Yeah. Um, but yeah, definitely a lot of trades yesterday, a lot of them happening um, very close to the 1 p.m. deadline. Uh, I guess we'll start with uh, the uh, the one that was kind of the last big one uh, with the Giants acquiring uh, Chris Bryant from the Cubs in exchange for two prospects. The Giants number six, uh, number nine, excuse me, overall prospect outfielder Alexander Canario and right handed pitcher. Caleb Killian, who is the 30th prospect. I mean, kind of first impressions here, Jasper, what do you see with, uh, you know, Chris Bryant going to San Francisco? I think the Giants got a great deal on this and an even better return. I mean, what the Giants have struggled with runners in scoring position all year, and now they have a guy who can clear the bases when he gets up to the plate. Now, when I initially saw this trade, I, there were talks of Lamont Wade and Joey Bart being involved, but the Giants kind of got out of here being able to unload, not necessarily mid-level prospects per se, but not like big name prospects that uh, their farm system is known for. Yeah, absolutely. And I think Giants fans and, and all baseball fans have kind of a misconception about what it takes to get some of the big names. And since Chris Bryant is a rental, Uh, it didn't really take as much as you would think if he had like maybe one more year left or two more years left. Uh, and he's a guy that could play everywhere. The giants have struggled, especially lately against left-handed pitching and Chris Bryant will bolster this team against left-handed pitching. He's most likely going to be playing the outfield, especially when Evan Longoria comes back and they're getting a guy that, you know, Scott Boris is his agent. Maybe they'll extend him at the season's end and, this will look a lot better, but Canario who's going back in return. I saw him last week in San Jose and he hit a little league home run. So he hit a ball off the wall and left field was trying to go for third for a triple. The shortstops relay throw to third sailed over to third baseman's head and it hit wow. up against the fence and the pitcher and the catcher both went after it. So leaving home plate vacant and Canario scored. So definitely an exciting player but it opens up a 40 man roster uh, spot because Canario was on the 40 man roster spot. So yeah, big trade, uh, Chris Bryant making his debut Sunday. All right. Here's another one that happened. Chris Bryant's teammate, Javier Baez going to the New York Mets uh, along with Trevor Williams and cash in exchange for the uh, Mets number five prospect, Pete Crow Armstrong. So, I mean, clearly, the uh, Mets picking up a gold glove award winner. He's going to get moved to second base. We'll see what happens with, you know, Jeff McNeil. Uh, but the story for me around this, and I don't know about you, is he's going to get to play with his guy, Francisco yeah. Lindor. So that that's definitely, that definitely sticks out for me. Um, well, I mean, we were talking earlier about how he's already come out and said he's seriously considering resign with the Cubs. And 
Well, I think this is a great move for the Mets, and I think Mets fans are probably excited as hell for it. I mean, I think it does put added pressure on the Mets now to win this division. Like, they cannot lose this division, you know. Uh, the city in New York won't have it. The team won't have it. Um, and, yeah, I mean, just imagine if this team collapses. It would be just an all-time Mets collapse. And But uh, they now, I think, can we say they have the best second base shortstop up the middle in baseball? Oh, I think it, I, I think it's definitely up there. Yeah, for sure. That's crazy. Yeah, no, I saw this trade go through, and I don't know how good Pete Crow Armstrong is, um, but yeah, I mean he's another rental. So if New York can re-sign him, and I mean obviously Steve Cohen showed he's willing to throw out the big bucks to get some names, but great move for the Mets, uh, but they have to win now. Yeah, for sure. Baez also a rental. And, you know, one thing about Baez is that I've never been wowed with him, like, completely offensively. Yeah. Like, that. there's just like, – he's put up good offensive numbers. He's been in really good lineups. But, you know, th- there's a point there where it looked like he could be a really good offensive player. But, like, the last few years, you know, like this year, he's a little bit above average offensively. But yeah, still, you know, a lot to be desired there for him. But still a gifted defensive player. Uh, here's another trade. This one's really interesting because, and we could get into the Minnesota twins after this, but blue Jays are getting Jose, uh, Barrios or Barrios. I don't, I've never really, I think it's Barrios, right? Yeah. I have no clue. Yeah. But they're getting Jose Barrios from the Minnesota twins for, and this is the big one. They're number two and number four prospects. Number two being Austin Martin, which is a recognizable name among the prospect world. And uh, Simon Simeon, sorry, Simeon Woods Richardson, who is a right-handed pitcher. So uh, Barrios still has a year left of control. He'll be in the Blue Jays rotation this year, next year. I mean, Martin was kind of the the player of the future. So uh, this is an interesting one because I think the Twins put themselves in a spot where they're going to, you know, retool. I don't know if it's going to be a full rebuild, but I think they're going to retool a little bit. And I mean, yeah, if you're the Blue Jays, what are you doing here? I mean, Austin Martin and Woods Richardson, like these are two guys who are supposed to be part of your young core going forward. Uh, Barrios is good, don't get me wrong, but he's not worth your number four and number six. Like that's ridiculous. Um, But I mean, the Blue Jays, hey, they see an opportunity to win this division right now, or they at least see an opportunity to grab a wild card spot, maybe match up with the A's. You know, the A's in the wild card game have never had good luck, so they may sneak into the playoffs, but – yeah, I mean, the Blue Jays are saying, hey, we want to win. We want to get Bo Bichette and Vladdy in the playoffs and make some noise. Let's do this. As for the Twins, like, I thought it was interesting. I thought it was interesting that they made J.D. and Brian Buxton available like 10 minutes before the deadline. I don't know. It was it was definitely a weird deadline for both guys involved. Yeah, I mean, I I think the – Mariners have been such a surprise team is and I think the Blue Jays and the Yankees both don't buy what the Mariners are giving them in the wild card hunt. So the Yankees made moves, which we'll get to in a second, and the Blue Jays made moves and they're both trying to catch that second wild card spot uh, with the A's having the first one. So or maybe, you know, trying to knock down the A's, who knows? But um, Toronto had the ability with the surplus of position players they have and I guess they're confident enough in Barrios that they could maybe unlock something that he hasn't unlocked yet in his career. He's nasty. He's got good stuff, but I think there's still a little bit left to unlock with him. Um, Mm -hmm. I would have loved to see like Nate Pearson involved in this trade. I feel like that was kind of another arm where he's had a little major league experience, but he hasn't really shown you that he can handle it yet. Um, But the upside is just, he's kind of similar to Barrios in a way because Barrios has shown that he can be that guy, but He's also kind of – I think him and Luis Castillo are very similar players in my mind. Both came in the league at the same time. Both kind of popped on the scene. And I I haven't really done a deep dive into Barrios' numbers this season, but I do think he's regressed a little bit. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, I just think Austin Martin and Woods Richardson was too much for a pitcher who's kind of regressed and only has one year of control left. Mm. Yeah, the the cost for control – Cost for controls definitely uh, skyrocketed. Cost for rentals has skyrocketed for sure as well. Yeah. I mean, this was one that really shocked me. Okay, 
White Sox getting Craig Kimbrell from the Cubs. Okay. They now have a two headed monster in the back end of the bullpen with Liam Hendricks and Craig Kimbrell, but they gave up Nick Madrigal and Cody Howard. I think that's how you say his name, but yeah. wow. Okay. I'm shocked at the return. I'm shocked that Nick Madrigal is so lowly valued. Like this guy's a good player. I mean, he was a former, you know, number four overall pick and he's getting dealt and he played a big part in what the White Sox were going to do down the future. He's hurt now. I understand that, but wow. I'm, I'm a little bit shocked by the return yeah. here for Craig Kimbrell. I haven't done a deep dive into the pitching prospect the Cubs got, but Nick Madrigal, I mean, in what games I have, he looks like the second coming of DJ LeMahieu, if we're being honest. This kind guy of. is going to be a second baseman that's just going to hit. He's going to bat 300 consistently. And him and Nico Horner up the middle is going to be fun to watch for the Cubs in a couple of years. Yeah, you know, it's a little bit mind-boggling. And, oh, yeah, Nico Horner, good point. He's going to he's gonna get a shot here. But Nick Madrigal, like – I mean, if you look at his his bat to ball skills, and this was something they talked about coming out of the draft, was like, for example, 2020, he had 103 at bats, four walks, seven strikeouts. That's crazy. So he doesn't really walk, but he also doesn't really strike out. Yeah. And then in 2021, in 200 at bats, 11 walks, 17 strikeouts, and hit 305. So this is a pretty, pretty good offensive player. Uh, that they're giving up and, and, and Howard's nasty. Cody Howard is a guy that uh, is expected to be a, a future late inning reliever. Who's got really good stuff. Um, so the, the Cubs, I think definitely won this trade uh, for sure. Uh, yeah. But Craig Kimbrell has an option. We'll see if they pick it up at $16 million. Uh, so maybe they'll pick that up and have a very highly paid back end of the uh, bullpen. <laughs> And um, now, uh, now the White Sox have kind of united those two players that kind of waited to get signed in Dallas Keuchel and Craig Kimbrell. Oh, yeah. Guy. But man, I mean, this move, I do want to just get this in here before we move on, but this move is definitely a, Hey, we see an opportunity for us to win a world series this year. We're going to go grab it. I mean, think about it in the seventh, eighth and ninth inning, you're going to have to go through Michael Kopech, <laughs> Liam Hendricks and Craig Kimbrell. And Garrett That's Crochet insane. in there, too? Yeah, no. The White Sox are insane, man. They're going to be so good come playoff time. Yeah, no, they have a really good – They, I, I think they might be the favorites. I think they've always been, but they might – I mean, this might – not. I wouldn't say one move puts them ahead of the curve, but, like, with Giolito, who I know he struggled a bit, but he's still Giolito. Dylan Cease, Lance Lynn – Lance Lynn, Jesus. Dallas Keuchel, Co- Carlos Rodon with the re, uh, re-shirt with the – Re, what, what's the word? Carlos Rebound. Rodon with the, yeah, resurgence, Carlos Rodon. And then that bullpen with, you know, a few nasty Garrett crochets, disgusting. I mean, he's striking out 11 guys per nine. Um, Aaron Bummers turned out to be a really nice piece for them. And you mentioned Copic. Wow. Yeah. Definitely. And, and pitching is going to win you games in postseason more than anything else. And they have it. They have offense. Elo Jimenez is back. White Sox are a scary team for sure. Uh, Another scary team that just got pretty scarier is the Los Angeles Dodgers. So they're going to get Max Scherzer and Trey Turner for Kbert Ruiz, their number one prospect, their number two prospect in Josiah Gray, the pitcher, and right-hander Gerardo Carrillo, uh, Carrillo and outfielder Donovan Casey. So, I mean, this is probably, if you look at it, the big bopper of the entire deadline with Max Scherzer, who almost went to San Diego by that deal fell through the Dodgers ended up topping the offer and Trey Turner got involved. (laughs) So, and honestly, I think a lot of the value with the number one, number two prospects going back has a lot to do with Turner. He's there for one more year. Corey Seager's not that played a role, but basically here's my thoughts on this Scherzer. So basically the Dodgers were behind the giants in the NL West with Trevor Bauer and getting Max Scherzer basically replacing Trevor Bauer makes a little bit of a difference. Like, not a game-changing difference, but I think the game-changing difference comes from Trey Turner. What do you think? Yeah. I mean, I think the world of Trey Turner. I think he could be a 30-30 guy easily. Um, but, yeah, I mean, listen, the Dodgers lost their prize free agent pitcher to, I mean, him being an asshole, but... <laughs> Uh, but yeah, Max Scherzer in a Dodgers uniform. I mean, 
it's always been, I mean, I remember the 2010s when it was just like Kershaw Scherzer, who's going to win the Cy Young. And now they're on the same team. And it's, it's mind boggling. If we're being honest, it's crazy. And I think this is what really got the giants motivated to go get Chris Bryant. Cause they're like, Oh man, we just won the season series, but we still have to get through the Padres to win this division. We need to get a guy who can kind of rival what the Dodgers are doing. Yeah. A hundred percent. And you know, Scherzer's going to make what, like 10, 12 starts and, uh turner's going to be playing second base now with with seager off the injured list now uh you're going to see you know max muncie probably shift to first base you're going to see gavin lux be the odd man out uh and that's just gonna you know be how it is and yeah you know maybe you flip him but or maybe you could have flipped him and gotten a lot back in return and revamped your system but now the dodgers system is a lot worse (laughs) with the uh their two prospects getting unloaded but I'm not really sure what, you know, obviously Scherzer depths their their pitching staff. He adds to that depth. Uh, and I think if I would ask you in like 2013, like what would you say if the Dodgers had Scherzer, Kershaw, and David Price on the same team? That would have been wild. It's so three Cy Youngs. Three Cy Youngs on the same team. A lot team. of hardware. It's a lot of and hardware. Walker Bueller's about to win a Cy Young eventually. Like, yeah. we're not going to sugarcoat it there. And if we are including Bauer, Bauer has the Mickey Mouse one, of course. So a yeah. lot of Cy Youngs on that team for sure. Um, and I don't this think is, Bauer's coming back, though. I don't think he is either. I, I don't think done. he'll even pitch for the Dodgers. And that's – I always wondered, like, would this deal have gone down with Bauer still oh, there? Yeah. Like, it, I mean, Kershaw not being healthy probably has something to do with it. Uh, but I think this you – know, Bueller's fine and dandy, but it's going to be a fun – wild card yeah with wild card game with you know either darvish for scherzer darvish versus bueller darvish versus gosman i mean there's there's literally a uh a no lose scenario there um that's the big trade of the deadline and trey Absolutely. turner trey turner deserves anything that you know fernando tatis and francisco lindor got paid Maybe a little bit less, but he deserves around that range because he's one of the more underrated players in baseball. Uh, and good for him. I know he doesn't want to play second base, but you know, for two months he could suck it up and then. And what say, oh, I don't want to play second base, but I'll, I'll get a ring, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> I'll get a ring, I guess. Second ring, it would be yeah. for, for Trey Turner. So yeah, big move. Dodgers definitely trying to catch the Giants, and it's funny that they're trying to. Uh, they're making this move. Because Lamont Wade Jr., Darren Ruff, like all those guys have played so well, and it's forcing the those guys are forcing the Dodgers' hand to make that move. And what Darren Ruff wasn't in the league for a couple of years. Yeah, he was in the KBO. Yes, crazy. Yes, Anthony DiScafani. I mean, these these weird no name, um, kind of uh, what's the right word here? Uh, Journeyman type guys are forcing the big bad Dodgers with all the, you know, all the money to, to make these big moves and deplete their farm system. It's hilarious. So crazy. That's funny. Also uh, here's an arm or a few arms going to the Phillies, Phillies trying to gain ground. They've been around 500. They're trying to get back and trying to beat the Mets. And really if there's a, any national league team that could benefit from acquiring a piece, it might've been the Phillies because they're kind of in no man's land right now yeah. in a weak division. And they have a lot to gain. So yeah. they're getting Kyle Gibson and Ian Kennedy uh, and Hans Crows, Crose, I think. God, I can't say names. And Cash from the Texas Rangers. Four right-hander. Here's the big one. Spencer Howard, basically the last big Phillies prospect left. Uh, Kevin Gowdy and Joss Gessner. I mean, Spencer Howard, I guess we could start there. He is the big bopper, basically, for the uh, the – Philadelphia Phillies, basically a top 50 prospect uh, for a bit now. Oh, God. I mean, Kyle Gibson's a good pitcher, and he's struggled as of late. But Spencer Howard, I mean, I guess that's the cost of business. They're getting a Ian Kennedy, who's really good for their back end of the rotation or the bullpen. This is a really intriguing one. I, you know, I didn't think yeah. they'd go in for, for Barrios. I didn't think they were really big on Scherzer, but I guess they got their guy with Gibson. Yeah, and I mean, Crosse is nothing to laugh about either. I mean, he's been in the Rangers farm system for a while, but I think he's he's definitely like a three to four, maybe a ceiling to number two starter. Yeah, so yeah. they got something good back. Yeah. <laughs> no, what's to say about this? Kennedy, the free agent, I think 
I think Gibson has one more year left of control. I think. Did they uh, sign him for two years? I think he was signed by Texas this off season. I think it might be a one year deal. Yeah, I mean, he had a he was an all star, had a really good start to the season, uh, but his yeah. contract runs through twenty twenty two. Yeah, so it does run through 2022, so he's got a year left, and it's at a pretty reasonable price, $7.67 million. So Not bad for the Phillies. 33 Especially years old. That's like in the Phillies that has cap problems already, or not luxury tax problems already. Yeah, they're a high-priced team, and you know it gives them a pretty pretty good top with, uh, with Wheeler, Nola, Definitely. Uh, Gibson now. So, yeah, Phillies trying to do everything they can to stay in this race. Uh, Crosset, by the way, Texas is number nine prospect um now and uh spencer howard gets into their uh their club now all right here's a good one this is kind of a local twist here the a's are acquiring jan gomes josh harrison and cash from the nationals in exchange for drew milas uh seth schumann and right-hander richard god these names are horrible gua i'm not even gonna try richard who's a right-handed pitcher uh so the A's, I said this like on one of the shows that we did, they have the most to gain from the deadline. Like the Phillies, they have the most to gain from the deadline. They made a few big moves. Jan Gomes isn't a sexy piece, but he's a competent catcher. But I like I like the Josh Harrison move. It's such an Oakland A's move. Oh, that's what I was going to say, man. It is such an <laughs> Oakland A's move to go get these guys. Because uh, usually... So here's how the A's trade deadline typically goes. Yeah, they're in on whatever star, and I they actually made a move and got Starling Marte this uh, trade deadline or a week before. Um, they're usually rumored to be in on a star, usually a pitcher. They always grab a bullpen arm, and then they grab to- a Tommy Listella or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. But this is a very Oakland A's move, and maybe Young Gums gets him past the wild card game. Who knows? Who knows? I'm a little interested. I'm a little intri- intrigued in – Maybe why they didn't get a shortstop. I feel like that was a glaring yeah. need on their roster because Elvis Andres just is not getting it done. Maybe I mean, they I'd... could have added another outfielder, but yeah. I mean, they got Robert Poisson in this farm system, so he's going to be a stud. Uh, Logan Davidson's another good player in their farm system at shortstop. I just I don't think they want to give up prospects for a rental, you know. Yeah, and and their pitching staff has done a, a good job despite the you know the lack of, you know popularity with the names chris bassett's yeah. been been great sean manai has been great frankie montas has been pretty good cole irvin's been a nice surprise um so they've had some really nice pieces come at, come out of there and um man is this lazardo gone yes that that's definitely what i want to get to we'll get to that actually we'll get to that now jesus lazardo is going to the miami marlins in exchange for starling Marte, uh and Marte's you know, a really, really good outfielder. He's a rental, athletic. Um, but, wow, it really costed Lazaro. This is the only one where I thought was, you know, a little bit lopsided, don't you think? Just a little bit. I mean, hey, Lazardo has shown this season that he's not ready. Um, and I think it just really goes to show their faith in A.J. Puck. I think they really think A.J. Puck could be the guy. Um but yeah, I, I I don't know. I think the A's could potentially get Marte long term. I think a lot of guys come to Oakland; they just love to play there. And I mean, Marte wants to contend. He's been on what? He's been on the Pirates, the Diamondbacks, and the Marlins. He's ready to make some playoff runs. So I think Oakland had to do what they had to do. Lazardo wasn't getting it done. He needed a change of scenery. Yeah, I think change of scenery was a good one. Uh, was was is definitely a good way to put that. Uh, my my AL Cy Young pick, man. My AL Cy That's Young awesome. pick, Jesus Lazardo going, <laughs> getting traded. Didn't even start with Rookie of the Year. You went straight to AL Cy. I Young. went straight to AL Cy Young for that one. I thought he would really blossom this year. I mean, they the way the A's work their guys in, like Puck, yeah. even Puck when Puck was healthy, like working him in through the bullpen, giving him some innings, then slowly ramping up his innings, and like this year, like it didn't work. Like in the big leagues, he had a a, a six point. 8-7 ERA and yeah. you know still striking out guys but giving up 10.9 hits per nine in Las Vegas at triple a had eight starts had a seven point uh or sorry had a 6.52 ERA so doing just as bad down there I mean Marlins have been great at developing pitching like recently under Derek Jeter 
So yeah. I think that, you know, they could unlock something there and he's still only 23 years old. There's still a lot there to work with. Yeah. Um, and I'm today years old when I found out that Jesus Lazardo was born in Peru and he's the first Peru player to ever play major league baseball. Good for him, man. I didn't even know that. That's crazy. Um, Maybe it was just a situation where, like, he was born there but grew up here. Yeah. I don't know. I'd have to look into it. But that's that's interesting. Um, so, the A's making some moves. Love yeah. to see it. Um, you know who else is making some moves? The Yankees. Oh, uh, yeah. We'll start off with the first trade they made here with getting left-hander Andrew Heaney in cash from the Angels for Jansen Junk and Elvis Pagaro. Uh, basically, they had no pitching depth with Corey Kluber and Severino Hurt. Um, I mean, you can only do so much after Garrett Cole, Jamison Tyone. Well, it looked like a promising move. I mean, he's really not established at all. He's yeah. done okay, but you need some more depth. And I guess Andrew Heaney's the guy you go and get. Uh, I mean, just pretty underwhelming move. Yeah. You know, what else to honest. say? Uh, Especially after the Yankees made big splashes in the other days. Yeah, that I mean, underwhelming. It, that this, the interesting thing about this was that. Um, the, the, the angels like were rumored for Max Scherzer, like yeah, in one report. So I don't understand. I don't, I don't know. Like, I mean, they're not contending. That was, they hopefully were never contending and they never had that thought, but yeah, definitely, uh, underwhelming to see uh, the Yankees get Andrew Heaney. Um, yeah. And then we'll get to the other Yankee moves in a second, but the Braves are getting Jorge Soler from the Royals. This, I think, is a very underrated move, so, so not underrated. underwhelming. So Under underrated. Silently, Jasper, silently, Jorge Soler has been one of the better, not really consistent, but when he's out there, one of the better home run hitters in baseball. Uh, maybe not this year, but, I mean, there no, was no, a no, point. Dude, his second half has been yes. phenomenal right now. Yes. I could actually pull that up. But uh, in the second half this year, Jorge Soler, wait for it, wait for it, has six homers and in the first half he hit seven. So there he goes. He's kind of got on a power surge here and he's got an OPS of 1.066. So he's tearing the cover off the ball right now. Uh, but yeah, big move. I mean, more of a DH kind of, but I guess he's going to play some right field. Yeah. Uh, I guess he's going to be Ronald Acuna Jr. or try to fill those shoes. <laughs> he's not Ronald Acuna Jr., but what do you think? Uh, big power is back in Atlanta. Yeah, I mean, they wanted some power. They went and got Jock early. They will get into Duval in a second, but they wanted some power in the outfield. I mean, what Acuna? You lost your spark, you know. Like that was the guy in the lineup where it was like, anytime he comes up, the pitcher shivers in his cleats a little bit. Um, so you had to go and make some moves, and they were able to make a lot of really good moves without giving up anything, without having to reach for players, without having to sell any farm assets. So. I think the Braves really did well this deadline. Yep. And uh, Adam Duvall, as you mentioned, also coming over. Uh, you know, we mentioned the the Acuna injury. They're really trying to fill those holes. Uh, they they got Jock Peterson, as you mentioned, too. And, and they get uh, uh, Solaire. And they got also Eddie Rosario. And now they're getting Adam Duvall, too. Uh, for catcher Alex Jackson. Jackson uh, was a former first-round pick. Uh, it really fell off. I mean, he was yeah. a big prospect at one point, just never really panned out. So I guess they're going to, uh, the, uh, the Marlins are going to, you know, see what they could do with Alex Jackson. Um, but Duvall coming over too, who uh, really good platoon bat, I guess. <laughs> so he has just like 30 home runs, but bats 167 written all over him. Yeah. hundred percent. Adam Duvall for you. hundred percent. And then Cardinals getting John Lester from the nationals for outfielder Lane Thomas um 37 years old back end starter at this point in time uh gives the cardinals a really really nice again 2010 rotation with lester and wayne right in there yeah. <laughs> but uh yeah i mean he's 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 up there among one of the better active pitchers in baseball uh collectively yeah. throughout his career um not a big return again so the nationals selling off pieces yeah. Uh, John Lester to St. Louis. Interesting. Um, and then I guess the same kind of pitcher, Jay Happ, also going to St. Louis, which they're really stacking up on the veteran uh, lefties. Uh, I know Jack Flaherty and Miles Michaelis are coming back soon, 
So I guess it's just, uh, you know, eating innings until then. And I guess it really wouldn't cost a lot to release John Lester at that point. Yeah. So I guess that's what they're doing. Um, they're also getting cash from the twins for John Gant and Evan Sisk. So that's an interesting move. Again, we're kind of yeah. going through the, the underwhelming I mean, stages. I mean, we'll get into winners and losers of the deadline in a second, but St. Louis, like, come on, guys, what are you doing? Yeah, I think they could have upgraded more. They were one of the guys, they were one of the teams who was really linked to story. And obviously, the Rockies probably messed that one up. But imagine just the Rockies being a farm system for the Cardinals with now Ar- or Arenado and then story. Yeah. And, and I, I guess it kind of goes to, you know, the amount of production that Paul DeYoung has not given you like lately. Yeah, I mean, right? I don't know what really happened to him. I mean, he looked like a nice young player at one point uh, and then hasn't really hit like yeah. the Paul DeYoung we know. So uh, trying to upgrade a shortstop for sure. Um, Braves, back to the Braves. I know I keep flip-flopping here, but they're getting uh, Richard Rodriguez, who's one of the better relief pitchers with Kimbrel on Sneaky the market. Last-minute move. Last-minute move, getting a bullpen guy for Bryce Wilson and Ricky DeVito. You know, basically Wilson, a guy who uses his fastball 87% of the time, um, but is effective with it, has been really good. Probably will set up Will Smith. Maybe we'll pick up some save opportunities, but I really like this move for sure. Yeah, no, I mean, the Braves, Richard Rodriguez could be a star this offseason. He could be Mm -hmm. one of those guys where you see the towels waving in the background. You got Joe Buck doing his thing and... (laughs) Oh, bless you. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> you got Joe Buck calling games, and I can just see – I can already kind of just see that, like, cameraman pan to Richard Rodriguez on the mound like this. So, I think this is a great move for Atlanta. And, I mean, as I said, they're sneaky. They're sneaky winners of the deadline. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And then the Red Sox are getting uh, relief pitcher Hansel Robles from the Twins. The Blue Jays are getting – uh, relief pitcher Joaquin Soria, who's still around from the Diamondbacks for two players to be named later. Um, Braves, again, I guess we mentioned Eddie Rosario briefly, but the Braves are getting Eddie Rosario in cash for, drum roll please, infielder Pablo Sandoval. Still getting at it. But the funny thing about this is Sandoval was released right after the trade by the Indians. That's but, tough because I think he was a fan favorite in Atlanta too. I mean, he's a fan favorite everywhere he goes, but he wasn't having too bad a year in Atlanta. He was a good, nice little platoon bat for them. Yeah, and a good guy off the bench had some monumental pinch hit home runs. I think yeah. he had like four of them uh, for the Braves this year. But at the end of the day, when the guy has a 645 OPS, it's really not getting it done. Uh, and you need no holes on your roster yeah. if you're trying to make a, a postseason push. Absolutely. Padres, one of the moves they made, they got a center fielder, Jake Marisnik. Um, I guess more of a cool. depth piece, you know? Yeah, again, cool. Fourth outfielder, yeah. Jake Marisnik still at it. Um, that's going to really bridge the gap between them and the Dodgers for sure. Yeah, absolutely. For Anderson Espinosa, who is once a former top prospect. Um, and he hasn't pitched above high A, but it feels like Anderson Espinosa has been around forever. Yeah. Uh, you know, in farm systems. Uh, Philly's getting Freddie Galvis again. I believe this is the third time they've gotten him. Uh, <laughs> he came up with them, and I believe he's returned like twice now. No, once. So this is the second time he's going back to Philly. For uh, Tyler Birch, Birch um, Galvis pretty much again will be a nice bench bat. Nice, versatile Absolutely. player. For yeah, no, definitely a guy you can just kind of plug in as guys get hurt. And shortstop's a glaring hole for Philadelphia. I mean, Scott Kingry didn't really work out there. DD has really regressed. And Freddie Galvis will add some nice depth for that. Yeah, I, I like teams that have added to their bench like that. Like, I mean, that like Josh Harrison could play everywhere. I mean, that's exactly some good moves being made. Um, Giants getting lefty Tony Watson from the Angels for – Jose Marte, Ivan Armstrong, and Sam Selman. Selman, the big piece there, uh, who is on the 40-man roster. I mean, mm, underwhelming, veteran guy. Um, Hey, but he pitched well when he was with SF, so maybe he'll catch fire again and help him in that September playoff push. Yeah, weird fact here. Tony Watson is the all-time save – or not the all-time save leader, the all-time holds leader 
in the history of baseball. That's the weirdest thing I've ever heard. But I mean, I guess I still uh, don't like I've watched baseball my entire life. I've had holds explained to me. I've read about them. I don't get it either. I don't know. (laughs) I don't get it either. Yeah, it's definitely a a stupid. uh, I think it's like a save, but like a save. In the late, like a eighth inning save. Yeah. Yeah. It's like you hold the lead or yeah, something like that. Yeah. It's it could be called something else. And yeah, it's weird. But yeah, Watson. You know, a pretty reliable lefty over his career. Uh, and Absolutely. basically what the Giants are doing here is they're getting a 40-man roster spot come November because yep. Watson's a free agent and they don't want to hold on to Sam Selman anymore. All right, Brewers getting John Curtis, a relief pitcher um, for catcher Peyton Henry. Astros getting Phil Maton or Maton for Yanni or Diaz uh, from the Indians uh, for Miles Straw. So Astros letting uh, Miles Straw go, who I guess played a big role for them the past few years. He's very fast, good defensive player, but he doesn't hit. No point in stealing bags if you can't hit. Yep, can't steal first base. That's right. Um, Ray's getting uh, outfielder Jordan Luplo, who's been the final out of two no-hitters. That's how I know him. Um, and uh, DJ Johnson. Um, yeah, I think Tyler Naquin and Jordan Luplo are very similar players. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, but you know, pretty average production for him just got activated off the injured list. Uh, pirates are getting Michael Chavis from the Red Sox. Marco Milani, if you're listening, Michael Chavis is now a Pittsburgh pirate and the uh, Red- fleece there, man. Yeah. Austin uh, Davis is not good. Yeah. Austin Davis going back to the Red Sox. I mean, I mean Michael Chavis wrong. was a big prospect at one point, right? Uh, he was kind of like your mean Mercedes where he came up as an older guy and burst out on the scene. I think, was he a COVID year star or was it the year before that he kind of had that little run? But I think it was the year before that. Uh, the, I guess nice piece for the Pirates. I'm surprised Brian Reynolds didn't get traded. Yeah, maybe they want to build around him. Yeah. Uh, he's already 27, I think. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's interesting. Brewers are getting Daniel Norris for Reese Olsen. Daniel Norris. Uh, the left-handed pitcher from the Tigers, I believe. That's a sneaky be, good pickup. Yeah, back-end starter maybe. Was he starting for the Tigers or was he? Out of no, the he's a uh, he's like long relief, maybe not middle. I don't want to say middle relief because I mean he did put in good innings. He's yeah, definitely back-end kind of uh, opener type guy. I'm telling National Brewers right now, they're scary. They're really scary. Absolutely. You go into a postseason series, you have three All Stars coming at you. You haven't even gotten to the big deal day. I know. I know. We'll get there. Sorry. Yeah. The the site I'm looking at is just like really <laughs> lagging. I'll skip this one because I don't know those. Sean Armstrong for cash, Rays. Uh, here's an interesting one and a decent size one. Padres getting Daniel Hudson from the Nationals for Mason Thompson. Yeah. Uh, Daniel Hudson is a really good reliever. Uh, and ever since he made that transition, he's bounced around a little bit. But don't let that uh, fool you. He's been a good reliever. He closed out the World Series a few years ago, and according to his stat called Stuff Plus, he was second uh, behind Craig Kimbrell on the available relievers, uh, okay. and he's really good. So the Padres getting a really nice bullpen piece. 13.2 Ks per nine, highest of his career, uh, pretty much having a career year right now for the, uh, well, for the Nationals, but now he's a, uh, a Padre. Yeah. And he was one of those guys who was integral in their run in uh, against the Astros in that World Series in 2019. Yeah, absolutely. Thompson is the Padres' number nine prospect. Um, Red Sox getting Kyle Schwerber from the Nationals. Uh, so Nationals, again, continuing their fire sale. Um, basically, Schwerber's going to hit home runs. I mean, yep. that's what he's going to do. He's going to go off. And this is a big bat. Where's he going to play, though? I, I thought about this, you know, I guess. Left- right. It's small. He doesn't have to cover a lot of ground. Uh, he was a former catcher, so he still has a pretty good arm. Yeah. I mean, left field's been, I guess, uh, Verdugo's going to be playing a lot of right field. They do have Hunter Renfro. Um, but, yeah, we'll it's a nice see. move. Yeah. Yeah. Adding a, kinda- adding, a, adding a left-handed bat. Yeah, and I, t- I talked about this uh, with our guy, Marco Milani. Uh, him and Joey Gallo are pretty much identical players. Yeah, you can make that argument for sure. 
Here's the big one. Yankees getting Anthony Rizzo from the Cubs for right-hander Alexander Vizcaino and Kelvin Alcantara. Um, I'll never say it like that again. Uh, but uh, yeah, Yankees sending their number nine and 12 prospects to the Cubs for Rizzo, who I did not even think was available, even though the Cubs are selling. And it was unexpected to me. I think the Red Sox were looking at him and then the Yankees swooped in at the last minute to make sure that didn't happen. Uh, but man, is it weird seeing him in a different uniform? Oh yeah, already hit a home run though. Yes, already hit a home run for sure. Um, I don't know, he always kind of looked like a Yankee. I can't lie. Uh, clean shaven. Yeah, yeah. Didn't have to. Didn't have to make any adjustments. Yeah, yeah. That that's a big move though. That's Rizzo getting him, and you know, getting any big left-handed hitter at Yankee Stadium is a big move. It's like, crazy. and we'll get to Gallo in just a second. I know we're waiting on that one to show up on my stupid site. Uh, but yeah, Anthony Rizzo still under control. Uh, the Cubs are paying the remainder of his salary this year and they're helping the Yankees, I believe next year too, with that. So Rizzo, I didn't think would ever leave Chicago, but, uh, in a good place. And that should, should have made Luke Voigt available, but it didn't. Yeah. Luke Voigt stayed put. I was kind of confused by that. Surprising, especially um, because he was one of the guys who, like, he led the league in home runs last year. Like, Luke Voigt has really mm-hmm. taken a step back yeah, in the development. He's, yeah, he's been hurt, which has really held him back. Um, this, in my mood, in my opinion, is a really good trade. Dodgers getting Danny Duffy and cash considerations from the Royals for a player to be named later. <laughs> That's the most interesting thing about this is that basically he's hurt right now. And the Dodgers could pick, uh, can can pick, can pick from a pool of players, uh, basically of of who they are not the Dodgers, the um, Royals. The Dodgers could, yeah, the Dodgers can make a pool of players to give to the Royals, and based on you know how much Duffy contributes with the Dodgers, the Dodgers could basically pick which quality of prospects the Royals right. give up. So they're basically letting the Royals are they're basically picking you know, what kind of prospects the Royals would be giving back based on what Duffy does. So like, if he doesn't contribute at all, the Dodgers could opt to give them their lowest prospects or nobody. If he contributes a little bit, you know, maybe mid. So it's such a good move for the Dodgers and Duffy could be a nice bullpen piece or rotation piece. Definitely love to see it. Uh, Diego Castillo getting, uh, going to Seattle, which is interesting because they traded Kendall Graveman too, which (sighs) I don't understand what the Mariners are doing, really. White Sox getting Ryan Tapera, one of the better relievers on the market, uh, from the Cubs. So two crosstown trades. And here's the big one. Yankees getting Joey Gallo, Jolie Rodriguez, and Cash from the Rangers for Ezekiel Duran. This is a massive haul for uh, yeah. going back to the, the Rangers. Duran is the, uh, the number 15 prospect in baseball. Josh Smith, number 14 prospect in baseball. Trevor Hoover is going back to – or wait, is that just uh, – hold on. Rangers – wait, I'm trying to I'm trying to see if uh, – Ezekiel Duran is definitely one of the top in baseball, but is he 15? I feel like uh, – You got to do some research here. Yeah, I got to do some research, but definitely a big haul there. Hoover, Glenn Otto also going. Joey Gallo in Yankee Stadium. I mean – That's going to be insane. That's going to be for the next few years. I mean, you're going to have basically a lineup of, and not in any particular order, but Judge, Stanton, Gallo. I mean, that is, that's insane. It really is insane. And it's a really big hit or miss lineup. And that's why you kind of need guys like LeMahieu and Glaber to kind of balance it out a little bit. But wow. I'm just surprised by the haul Texas was able to get. And I mean, yeah, they got a big haul. This is also just like a, praise them as a franchise like they have sat on trading gallo for so long they waited for the right deal and they finally got it done and they walked away feeling good about losing one of the guys one of their organizers the face of the organization pretty much yeah for sure and and you know he's that lefty bat that new york didn't have yeah so they have all these right-handed bats and ruben Odor was like the only guy that wasn't and now they get their left-handed bat gonna be interesting and rizzo, to and rizzo. Like yeah you're right it's going to be interesting to see where everybody plays. To be They're honest. going to love the short porch. Uh, yeah, short porch. Judge, I think, is going to stay in right, maybe move Gallo to the left. Gallo, a premier defender in the outfield. Um, 
Blue Jays upgrading their back end. They're going to get a hand here with Brad Hand <laughs> uh, for Riley Adams. So Riley Adams uh, just made I'm his debut, enough. I think. So he's uh, going to be number 17 on Toronto's prospect list. Uh, Rockies made a move uh, with the Reds. They got with the Reds like twice for bits and pieces. Yeah. Right-hander Ashton Godet. Is that his name? Yeah. Uh, for cash. So uh, that's an interesting deal. White Sox getting Cesar Hernandez to take over from Nick Madrigal at second base. Uh, Brewers getting Eduardo Escobar from the D-backs for two prospects. Cooper Hummel. Such a good move. I do too. I really like Eduardo Escobar for some reason. I like him. He's all-star. Um, I believe they're going to have him playing a lot of first base. Makes um, sense. Who they, they have Vogel back over there. Like, yeah, but he's, he's hurt and you have uh, Rowdy Telez now. So I think there's going to yeah. be some kind of platoon maybe. Um, uh, I'm trying to skip through some of these here. Astros getting Yumi Garcia. They're getting a, a bullpen piece. Not for, a bad move by them. Yeah. From he the could Marlins. easily turn it around in Houston. Like he's had a rough year with Miami, but I could definitely see him turn around in Houston. Yeah. For Austin Perrett, Brian De La Cruz. Reds getting Michael Givens from the Rockies. So they did sell a piece. Yeah. And they're, they're getting Case Williams and Noah Davis. Uh, Mariners getting Tyler Anderson from the Pirates for Carter Bins, Joaquin Tejada. There's a few left here. Reds acquire Luis uh, Sessa and Justin Wilson for the Yankees for a player to be named later. Astro, like I mentioned, Astros getting Kendall Graveman and Rafael Montero from the Mariners. A's getting Andrew Chafin. That was earlier. Yankees got Clay Holmes. Padres got Adam Frazier, uh, who's leading the National League in hits right now. A uh, few minor moves here. Rich Hill going to New York. He made his debut. And then the first one was Nelson Cruz to the race. So a few good moves here. Now we're going to go over our winners and losers. Um, we'll go with our losers first, and we'll switch off here. I'll go with my third loser, and that's the Minnesota Twins. Uh, not because their deadline was bad or anything, but just because they got themselves in a position to sell in the first place. Yep, That's a bad thing. They should have been competing this year. And honestly, their team is not that bad or was not that bad. And they could have easily revamped for a run next year, but they opted to trade Bur uh, Jose Barrios and tear it down. So yeah. I'm not too confident in what the Twins have in the future. They barely even got started with their run, and now it's all going to be gone. That so, is very unfortunate. Yeah. All right. Who's, so for my third yeah. loser, I got Tampa Bay because all deadline we heard, oh, Tampa Bay on in, in on Chris Bryant, Tampa Bay in on Max Scherzer. Tampa Bay is going to make a move. Tampa Bay is finally going to add a legitimate star to their team, uh, a guy who might actually bump up their payroll for once. And now the news of Tyler Glass now also needing Tommy John, friend of the program. Uh, show, yeah. Uh, yeah, Tampa Bay, they had a chance to make a move, and uh, the teams around them got better, and they did not do anything, you know? Like, they just kind of stood pat. Yeah, I like I like the Nelson Cruz trade a lot. I think Cruz, really anywhere like he was rumored to go, would have been great because I yeah. love Nelson Cruz. But, yeah, I think they could have added another player somewhere. Um, that I mean, I don't know how much budget issues play into it, probably a lot from their standpoint, but – and they also had the best farm system in baseball. They had the best farm system in baseball, so they had the prospect capital to go out and get something. Exactly. It's not like they they couldn't. So really no excuse for the uh, the Rays. And interesting because the Blue Jays got better and the Yankees got better. So, so did the Sox, man. So did the Sox. So the American League getting better, Twins kind of – or uh, Rays kind of staying. My number two loser is definitely the Padres. I, yeah. I feel like – I mean – they got Daniel Hudson. They got Adam Frazier, two legitimate pieces. Frazier is interesting because we don't really know where he's going to play. Is the Crone zone like going to give up his second base spot and move to the outfield? Frazier going to move to the outfield, but I like him to the lineup. Uh, and Hudson's a good bullpen piece. But when you're so close to getting Max Scherzer and it falls through, that's an automatic loss for the deadline. Like, automatic loss for the deadline they didn't get an outfielder they had talked about trevor story moving him to center field they didn't get a big bat they were hoping for yeah padre is definitely my loser second loser 
Yeah, so I think I, I got our two and ones flipped. I have the Rockies here for standing okay, yeah. pat and being a directionless franchise. Uh, I know you're expecting a huge rant, but at this point, I, I got nothing. This team is just so depressing, man. Uh, the fact that you can't, like, they are, like, directionless is the perfect word for it. Like, why would you hope Trevor Story stays on a qualifying offer? Why would you hope John Gray stays on a qualifying offer? They want to go and win. They don't want to stay in this horrendous franchise that drives players away, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And my number, my number one is the Rockies uh, for the same reasons. You know, I, I don't know what they're doing. I know it's tough to do stuff under an interim GM. I will buy that for this deadline, but they need to hire someone in there and somebody needs to get in there and change the culture. Yeah, that's what needs absolutely. to be done. Sell the team. Uh, for sure. Yeah, so I have the Padres as the biggest loser because the Giants got better. The Dodgers got better. Adam Frazier is a great player, but he's not the missing piece for that team. Losing Scherzer sucked. And if one of those NL Central teams goes on a run, you, they may be in trouble. Mm -hmm. yeah. Especially without the loss of Blake Snell. That's huge. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And then the winners, uh, number uh, number three, had the Braves. Yep. Uh, I think the Braves, I'm a big fan of teams that, and the Braves, like, they're, they've struggled. They're not the same team we saw based on their play. But whenever, you know, you're trying to actively get better and you're trying to take advantage of a, a very uh, unknown situation in the NL, in the NL East with – the Mets being not as good as you think, yep. but they're still in first place. And the Phillies being 500, good for the Braves. Like, good right. for them trying to get better and take advantage of it. I, I, I like them being aggressive. Definitely. I have Texas just because they were able to completely revamp their farm system and uh, unload some of the guys they had. Yeah. No, my number two is, is the uh, Miami Marlins. Miami Marlins for, for continuing to do what they do. Yeah. Uh, I mean, they're so consistent in, in selling off pe like they efficiently sell off pieces. And I know, you know, they had a nice core once upon a time with Yelich and G uh, Jeter with Yelich and Stanton and Ozuna. Um, and they didn't necessarily need to tear it down, but they're doing this rebuild flawlessly. And I think they're doing a really good job with, with, you know, continuing to collect young pieces. Jesus Lazardo really was the definitely the one that I mean, just a sneaky nice move. Trading Duval, trading Yimi Garcia. They're getting pieces and they're putting them in their system. I like what they're doing in Miami. Definitely. I have the Giants at number two. Uh they have now solidified themselves as contenders with the addition of Chris Bryant. Nice. Yeah. And my number one's the Dodgers. I I mean getting Max Scherzer's big. Um, again, like I mentioned, it's not the same without Bauer because basically he's filling Bauer's shoes and the Dodgers were in second place with Bauer. So, which means the Dodgers would be in second place with Scherzer, but Trey Turner, I mean, trying to get him and, you know, I guess they would be, you could put them like as an interesting, you could put them in an interesting position because they gave up their two best prospects. And you could argue that they hurt themselves doing they that, but all stars though, like I'm... yeah, but they have insurance now for you know yeah. if Corey Seager doesn't resign. So absolutely, I, I like what the Dodgers did. Yeah, I have the Dodgers as my number one too. Uh, they just got to play great baseball down the stretch and hope the Padres can beat up on the Giants. Yeah, they exactly one hundred percent. A lot of series with the Padres, I believe, like seven games or yeah. eight games. So, um, super important series and. Again, like you, that's been the Dodgers thing all year. They just have to play well. Yeah. And uh, and if they play well, if they go on a run that we know uh, they they have in them, they have a run in them. We just haven't Absolutely. seen it yet. Uh, they're the best. Like team we've been the, saying that all year. Yeah, they're they're the they won the the World Series last year. It's the best team, you know, for a reason. And uh, they've had some unfortunate things happen. But interesting little point here before we wrap up. Interesting that they were in on Kimbrel or had talked yeah. about Kimbrel because if you're Kenley Jansen, you don't want to hear that. <laughs> no, you do not. You don't want to hear that. And you're pissed by yeah. you're, you're pissed Cause you're, you're the all time Dodger saves leader. You're one of the best relievers in Dodger history being replaced. I mean, that's very interesting. 
Yeah, and I think Kenley has lost a step over the last two years, and it's kind of tough to see just going from super dominant guy. And that's just how closing in baseball is, man. One year you're the best, the next year you're giving up grand slams to dead center to Howie Kendrick to end your season. So, yeah, the Dodgers, um, I would they Craig Kimbrell would have been an awesome piece there. Yeah, 100%. Craig Kimbrell would have been a great piece. Uh, anywhere, really. All yeah, right. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. Uh, we, hopefully we, uh, we did a lot here for the deadline. Uh, we pretty much recapped literally everything. <laughs> uh, we, we had our commentary along the way. Uh, thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Uh, you could follow us on Twitter at Rizzo cast and Instagram at Rizzo cast. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching and have a great day. <laughs>